So this next part is so we we worked a lot in the first part through somatic regrounding to get more attuned and bring the whole three portals into the conversation, the interior conversation. As chapter one described, the part of the insight about the soul is that we are each wired with a unique configuration of qualities. The soul is there to facilitate those qualities. And what we just uh, reflected on is that we think that's primarily for us to feel so special, but the suggestion was, well, yes, we are each very special, but it's even more important in the universal sense because each one of us, each person, is a once in the history of the universe opportunity for that composition to experience life through. So life wants to experience itself through the unique composition that you are, we each one of us are. Is. So we, we are now going to engage with a seven-step process. And you, you do want to have for this pen and paper to get reconnected to solve your natural qualities. And after we complete it, we will have a 16 minute in rooms to uh, exchange about it in groups of four. And then we'll come back and if time permits, we'll, we'll do the, the other part that I plan for today. Usually I over plan. So for a three hour workshop, I typically uh, find time and again that I somehow created content of five hours, but it won't be the first time. And we'll find what we can actually get to today. So with that, I'm going to ask, uh, let me see, is there anything else I want to say before this practice? Let me bring the slide and I, it will tell me whether I need to say anything else. So this is where we were. We were with this idea of the ghost. And the invitation is to... indeed relax into the greater range. So this is now about attuning to your natural qualities. Um, I will ask Paul to accompany, accompany me as I speak and guide us through this softly and I will bring a step and then there will be a minute or so to do the practice or the, to fulfill that step and then we will move to the next step and at some point we'll bring some of your voices. So uh, please Paul if you can join me. Uh, you're muted. Okay. Thank you. A seven step process, discovery, attuning to your natural qualities to facilitate your experience and your soul into the richer, more versatile, more resourceful nature that it has. And so, step one, I ask that you think of yourself at an early age, say six or seven, and try to sense what were you like. And write down three qualities or natures that were prime about you, that describe, describing what you enjoyed, what energized you, what excited you, what you love doing and being with. I'm going to go quiet and let you just write three. You may want to write more than three qualities and natures.
as you sense into this, you might get even a feeling of, oh, I was shy, or, or I was a little frightened, or was, I was a little scared. At least in my case, these would be words that would come up with that. But these are not the qualities of the soul that we are inviting. These were already part of the secondary impressions because of separation events. So if what's, it's completely natural that if you look at yourself in your mind eye back to age five, six, seven, it's completely natural that some of those natures will come up. And if they do, just acknowledge them and tell them to relax and sit down uh, and give you space to feel that other vibrant or whatever quality that naturally was part of your childhood. example is I loved being in movement. I loved running and swimming and roaming outdoors and I loved reaching the point of exhaustion. So there was joy in it, there was movement in it, there was a sense of flow and there was a tremendous sense of discovery. These are some of the qualities that I will highlight here. And that leads us to step two. So now you want to reflect a few years later, say at age 11 or 12 or 13. What are some of the prime natures that emerged with you in those years? They may be similar or different. Again, write down three qualities. As I sense to age 11, 12, I feel uh, a sense of curiosity, a tremendous uh, inquisitiveness, desire to understand how the world works. And I become um, very attuned, very sensitive to what's occurring around me. And that sensitivity has, is a two-edged sword. I sense beauty, but also I sense what I want to uh, step back from. And be away from. So what, what, are, th what are the three qualities you'd highlight for yourself at that age? again further up the timeline you're at age 17 or 18 or 19 what are the prime qualities that you are expressing at that age what has filled you with energy even to the point where you lost a sense of time what were the natures and the qualities that accompanied these experiences
naturally when we trace back to these ages we will get all sorts of feelings and perhaps even emotions that may flood us that's okay i'm asking you to be as as neutral or as objective or as forensic to to describe the deepest qualities that are part of your nature they are revelatory about your unique configuration for me at that age i become um, highly attuned to the sense of flow interior flow and when there is flow with the environment it may be dancing it may be playing it may be conversational flow So step four, um, you're now looking at a list of possibly up to nine or more qualities or natures. I'll ask you to look at them and, and try to sense, not just from the mental portal, but through the sensory, mental, and soul spiritual portal, circle the five that you feel are most prime for how you, you sense you're naturally configured and wired. There's no right or wrong here, it's simply make a selection that's based in a neutral observation of yourself. Okay, and now with each of these five qualities, I'd invite that you write a sentence of how you have expressed or are expressing this quality. So for example, in my experience flow, the yearning for flow, the experience of flow is, an, is a primary quality in the configuration with which I'm wired. And so I, the line I write to express the action, the experience of that is I enjoy energized flow in running and swimming and through creative work. So I'm going to go quiet here, let Paul play and let you write five action based lines, short lines describing the quality in action with you.
Okay, so let's have a couple of examples. Somebody is prepared to read one of their sentences. Please put your hand up and we'll just get a sense from a few of you how you describe the action of that quality. And then we'll complete this two other steps. Please, Kiriki. Yes. It's surrender to the joy of the moment in a celebratory way through singing and dancing. So the quality is surrender or joy? It's also joy and joy. surrender. Ah. Thank you. Let's hear it one more time, please. Surrender to the joy of the moment in a celebratory way through singing and dancing. Thank you. Somebody else, please, uh, an example of please, Bob. You're muted. Okay, like you, I always had a love of movement and running when I was, I remember running around our driveway when I was four years old in grade school, I would run home from school, run back to school after lunch. And today I continue that with uh, daily fitness routine and uh, love of sports, tennis, golf, etc. Beautiful, thank you. It's been a universal thread. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Bob. Please, uh, Mark. Uh, hi, everybody. I experience vast, expansive flow states when I pursue something called universal logic, an inward state of thinking that is simultaneously a being. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, Michelle. The quality is uh, urgency for life. And the sentence is urgency for life caused breaking out and away from cultural parameters by leaving home, work, and the land I lived on. Mm. Yes, thank you. So each sentence we, we get, just few words, but you get the sense that is so much more multidimensional. And a few words, uh, please, uh, Afshalom. I didn't exactly follow your instructions, which is part of my nature. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote a sentence that describes uh, the chief features of a uh, the early 20s of my life, which is searching for truth and putting things right and becoming curious about the mysteries of life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, please, Sus. Yes, hello, uh, Aviv. Um... I haven't quite followed instructions either, but I'm a little slow, so the sentences didn't get to to, to the fullness, but um, I was quite uh, inquisitive and full of invention um, when I was when I was small. So the first activity that I engaged in when I was about two and a half was dancing. I absolutely loved rhythm and felt rhythm and dancing. So I uh, loved that uh, from very early age. I also, um, a little later, um, um, had a sense of, I liked to, um, 
obtain over them. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we were on the beach, <laughs> the first thing I would do was skip into water and find the nearest stone to sit on. So I could see what was going on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. That that's... Mm. Thank you very much. So the, the learning through some of what we're hearing is that for some of us, it's easier to trace and discover the specific qualities by connecting to some early experiences, which is actually the practice recommended in uh, chapter one, which is to track down to those experiences and then sift through the experiences, the, the qualities. I, I uh, thought I, I would do a different practice here today because I like to every time do something new to keep us all interested. Uh, so thank you for that. And we, we are discovering that we have few people who are naturally rebellious in their soul and don't want to follow instruction. We love that, quality, that soul quality, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Sophia, uh, we'll go to you. Uh, you'll be the last on this, so we, <laughs> so we proceed to the next, please. Hello, Adrian. Well, the quality which uh, I have from a very early age, from five years old, is mischievousness, one quality. And what I would say with this is I love to tease others because it takes them out of the portrayal they saw, they project. So I had this from very early age, and I still have it today. Wonderful. Thank you. So again, what is it we are trying to track down? We're trying to... This is where the word forensic is good. We, you typically use forensics in the sense of trying to track down what happened in a crime scene. In this case, we're trying to use the forensic capacity to discover the unique cosmology that you are, each person is such that there is a way to invite the soul to the fuller liberation, fuller e expansion of that. So with that, let me bring uh, us quite swiftly through the next few steps, and Paul, by all means, accompany me. So the invitation now, and you may have not written yet these sentences, you may have done it in a different way, that's all right, any way you self-tailor the, pra the practice for you works because no practice should ever be formulaic. Each and every practice needs to be adapted to the way you are. This is an invitation in step six to give yourself two evaluation points. So say you identified a certain quality. Say it's flow, say it's the love of dance, say it's anything and then you described it in with action can you trace when were you in the optimal most most at full in the expression of this quality at what age was it 27 or was it 37 or later so give yourself a on the 1 to 10 scale how were you so for me I loved being in flow and roaming in the outdoors and around 38, 39. I, I was a good um, eight and a half, nine out of 10 for that. We were already living here in the Pacific Northwest. We loved going outdoors. And uh, I did a lot of that. So I gave myself an eight and a half, nine. Uh, where am I today with that? I'm probably uh, still a good eight. I don't uh, do as much hiking in the Cascades as I used to, but I enjoy in other ways roaming in the outdoors. So this is just giving yourself an evaluation of where are you, how close are you, to expressing your natural qualities. I'll go quiet and let you give yourself an evaluation score.
So, step seven, as you reflect on the, this inner sense, inner evaluation of how free and how at full and how liberated you are with those inner qualities, you want to take notice, uh, have they been restrained, have they been curtailed, or have you been able, able to liberate a greater range, a greater richness, a greater intensity of expression. Again, no, there is no right or wrong. There is no sense of judgment, um, punishing judgment. There is a, a moment of notation to self where how liberated am I with my soul, natural qualities. And as you contemplate this, uh, the final step, uh, I said seven steps, but I, seven, step seven and eight are really an expansion of the same idea. Imagine and contemplate. What will it feel like? What will it look like? To express today, your content today is different to 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. You're in a different stage in your life. Still, what will it feel like, what will it look like to express this quality or these qualities in the way that's most, most naturally fitting for you today at full? Let you uh, contemplate this and sense and feel this for another minute and then Lisa will drop us into rooms of four to reflect and share any insight that emerged for you in this inquiry as you seek to attune to your natural qualities. Let's practice when we are together with others in the room, deep listening and appreciation in a way giving each person as they share an insight, an opportunity to have an ecology where we can support and encourage each other to expand to the fuller range of our natural qualities. It can be quite uh, liberating and healing to speak to those senses and discoveries. Please, uh, Lisa.